We're going to have to take it where we just left off, y'all. So David had the war, and we're talking about we're talking about understanding how impactful a, a, a man's a man's life. Not to, we're talking about men of God, how impactful their lives are, and and how important it is for them to be in the role. So I was talking about I'm coming from First Samuel chapter thirty, and in this intense chapter of the Bible, David, who, as we know, overcame Goliath in his youth. This man in his youth took down a giant that had defeated thousands of his um, um, neighbors in neighboring towns. The enemy, he was, this guy, this enemy was so renowned in how he terrorized people that even the armies were afraid of him. So I'm just like, what? And David, David, in his youngness, in his in his body form of youth, took down an old demon. I'm talking about an old one. And he defeated it. And this is so powerful in how much power we have in our youth and why they are being attacked. But in his youth, David had big brothers. I heard he had three, maybe more, big brothers. But it was not their duty. It wasn't for them. His glory and who he became and who he bore as a son and several. David had several sons, but the son that he gave his throne to, Solomon. Okay? And, and mm, that is a true example of a king. To overcome adversity, pop, the kind that is renowned, the kind that is renowned adversity, and to take it down to a point where he could save everyone else around him. And he did that, and in doing so, he became a king. And in his kingdom time, he had to war because he, he took a kingdom from a man who was not a God-serving man. But God had already ordained his space and time in this area. And the king was for David. And David married his daughter Abigail as a part of the union. And if you know anything about this story, Saul was the king. Saul had been chosen to be king, but it was his time had been up. He could not, he could not do it anymore. And um and, and he was very upset at times about how he realized his kingdom wasn't his anymore and he would he would attack David David would play instruments he was multi-talented to soothe him and and um but David had to war so one of these warring times after he had already overcome Saul and and him and Jonathan was Saul's son were best friends and and man deep a really good story that people should truly read. Study the whole book of Samuel. The whole book of Samuel. Because Samuel was was taken from a grief, was given because of, of a prayer for a child of a woman who was barren. And Samuel's life was anointed. And that he was anointed to pick and choose kings and to and to be a leader. And in and, and his time. So anyway, such a deep story. Let's get back to David. Let's get back to David. Okay. So after Samuel tells Saul that God has rejected him as king, David, a son of Jesse from the tribe of Judah, enters the story. So David enters the story after Samuel tells Saul that God has rejected him as king. David, the son of Jesse from the tribe of Judah, enters the story. So David enters the story. I've already given you the update on him. But when I tell you that David is a man of war and, they, and he won, and he won, and a man after God's own heart. That's deep too. But when staying focused on this in particular event is that David has led his whole town to fight. And when I when people tell David's history is so is so important and and my and revered that people listen when he tells them to go. 
And so they followed him and they go to war. And when they come back, their wives are missing. Their children are missing. And Lodo Ishadarahai, their family life is destroyed. They don't have nothing to come back to. And they're like, what were we out here fighting for? We're here with you, David. But what were we out here fighting for? We're back. And they sought to kill David, a king. They sought to kill him, like, because it was more than what they wanted to do. It was more than what they had bargained for. They had given what they wanted to give, and they had done it in reverence. But when they came home, they were really doing it for their own families and for their own people. And when there was no one there to embrace, they sought to kill David. And so... And I tell you that mm, leadership has accountability. One, leadership has accountability. The leadership is a man, that and that man has accountability to whomever he is leading. And when that man, and then they get done in their serving, they should be able to come back to their home and to their families and to their wives and rejoice. One, they should be able to embrace that. Okay? That's that's partly what we're talking about. But the other part is that if a man is not to be trusted or if there is a surprise at the end that's not anticipated and that is hurtful and painful, the thought of punishment, the thought of retaliation is not far from a mind of anyone who has been too mistreated, right? Anybody who has been thoroughly already put in through a war, taxed in life already, that they're fighting wars and winning. And when they come back, they want to just come back to their families in comfort and peace. And they can't get that when they want to come back. That will lead people to think. And it said, David and 600 men with him came to the Bessor Raven, where some stayed behind, for 200 men were too exhausted to cross the ravine. But David and 400 men continued the pursuit. They found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. They gave him water, drink, and food to eat, part of a cake of pressed figs, and two cakes of raisin. He ate and was revived, and he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. This is their king. David asked him, to whom do you belong and where do you come from? He said, I'm an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Najib of the, of the Karathites and the territory belonging to Judah and the Negev of Caleb. And we burned Ziglag. David asked him, can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master and I will take you down to them. So they win this war. David didn't even eat. The men were not eating. They were very tired. They were very exhausted. But David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks and herds. His men drove them ahead of the other livestock, saying, this is David's plunder. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow him and who were left behind at the Bazor Redeem. They came out to meet David and the people with him. As David and his men approached, he greeted them. But all the evil men and troublemakers among David's followers said, Because they did not go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and children and go. But David replied, No, my brothers, you must not do that with what the Lord has given us. What you're not about to do is tell them, is just decide that they didn't go, these 200 tired men, that they only get their wives and they don't get to get the good things and, and the rewards and the the money and the and the rewards that we have gotten. David said, no, no, no. You must not do that with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and handed over to us the forces that came against us, the cattle and the herds. Who will listen to what you say? 
The share of the men who stayed with the supplies to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All will, will share alike. David made his this a statue and the ordinance for Israel and that day to this. When David arrived, wow, wow. He sent some of the plunder to the elders of Judah who were his friends saying, here is a present for you from the plunder of the Lord's enemies. So he even shared what other people he did not get. So this is how good the victory is at the end. But I'm telling you, in the beginning they came back and there was no one there. Okay? They began to weep. They wept. They were so they were so grief stricken from their missing their kids and their families. But as you heard, everything comes back to them. But this is how they were feeling in the beginning. Verse Samuel 30 and 4. It said, When David and his men came to Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. They had no strength left to cry. They were so exhausted. These men who have already fought a war still had emotion. And they cried until they had none left. They cried until they had nothing left in them. And it says that David's two wives have been captured. Ahinoam and Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Again, see, David is a man who had already found strength enough to defeat a lion and a bear as a young king. So, and I see these lions and bears as being things like sex or drugs or music or things like that. He had already defeated these hard things in his own life as a as a child as a youth not having to follow after older people because he had siblings but on his own he was a quiet man with the sheep doing god's work right taking care of god's god's earth and taking care of god's creations right and the sheep and just a hurt just a peaceful man looking after God's earth and his sheep and his creation. And he had came against things while he was out there because people wanted the sheep. The animals wanted the sheep. And people even wanted the sheep. He had to protect them from other people too. And so in that, I hear David is saying here, he had to find his strength in the Lord, his God. See, look at that. A man after God's own heart, he sought God's heart. He would continue to seek God's heart for everything so that he could get the wisdom. That's what it means a man after God's own heart. He was always seeking the heart of God. He was always looking to God when he had problems. Even in that bear, even in the lion, in whatever battle, even when he fought Goliath. He was always seeking the strength from the Lord his God. Always seeking after God's heart. A man after God's own heart. Not in that he was sexing or whoring or any of that. A man who just continually to seek after God's heart. Okay? Because people will take David's life. And I'm probably going to put this in a whole nother video next. Because that's so much more to talk about. But a man's after God, God's own heart because he sought God and he prayed to God. And he would continue to seek God for his strength. And he found strength in him. And then he went to go get wisdom from a priest. The, the son of... And he said, bring me the word and so and so he brought it to him and david inquired of the lord shall i pursue the raiding party will i overtake them pursue them he answered you will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue and i already showed you and told you 200 men couldn't even go they were too tired he took still 500 and they got everything that God told them that they would do. He said, you will certainly overtake them and see in the rescue. Only God can ensure a victory of that certainty that they have taken their wives. When you want to get something back so 
vehemently, so righteously, so determinedly. And when I tell you God let them rock them, hold on, don't eat. This brings me so much joy because I have had mm, attacks on my life. And I've only been seeking God's heart in order for his strength. It's only the strength of God. As a queen, I seek only God. And so when I tell you the success that God brought to him, he said, because the men were going to stone him. But each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. They were going to stone David. They were going to stone David. But David had to go talk to God and get the word from the priest. And the, and what he had to go read, he read an epod. An epod is a word. An epod, let's look it up. E-P-H-O-D, my friends. And I would put it in the description if I was going to talk about some more. But it says a sleeveless garment worn by the Jewish priest. So it's a prayer cloth. Let's, it's something you put on to pray. An ephod. Okay? You Something in ancient Israel they would put on to pray. So he went in and put on his prayer garment. He put on a prayer garment. He put on his prayer garment. And he went into the frontal lobe. He went into the temporal lobe. He went into every part of his being. And he prayed and God gave him wisdom. And he said, let me, let go and you're going to win. He said, pursue them and you will win. Only God can give you that kind of victory though. <laughs> and, and God rocked these people so hard that they were over there like, well, they don't need to get none. And I'm trying to tell you. It was that solid of a victory that they could talk about what they didn't want to share with whom was too tired to go to, to help with the victory. See, some people are like, oh, but you didn't make it over here to do it. Let me tell you something. God didn't care that they couldn't make it over to do it, that they were still too tired, that they were still grief stricken, that they were still weak because David hadn't eaten in three days. So they hadn't eaten in three days, at least. And they just didn't have the energy. They were just too still grief stricken. Okay? They were still in their trauma of the situation. But David, as a king, said, No, my brothers, you must not do that with what the Lord has given us. God gave them the whole victory. He said, God didn't just give us this victory. God gave this victory to all of us. And a wise king would do that because think about if he had only given it to some. Only the ones who had the strength. One of them days, some of them are going to get their strength back. And they were going to come back and get everything that wasn't given to them. Because at the time, the strong ones were too bitter minded to share. But a real king would be like, no, this is from God. Everything we have here is from God. So therefore, we're sharing it with them too. Because they need it just like we do. Man, that's a real king. That's a real king. And it takes a real king to lead. And I'll tell you, there's so many kings in the Bible. If you even read the books of First and Second Kings, there's so many kings. But we thank God for being a king. That's why David is a man after God's own heart, because he sought God's heart and he did God's heart. Whew, that makes me cry. It makes me happy. It makes me joyful that like David is a man of ordinance and statue. He had a statue, a posture of like, no, what is God going to say about this? What does God want from this? What I will seek God's heart, even in hard times when people want to get me, I'm still going to think about them to do what's best for us all. That is a king. And, and maybe, maybe you didn't hear it the same time that I said it right here. But to hear it, it says, he said, but all the evil men in trouble among us, among David followed, said, because they did not go with us. But David said, I don't care. He called them evil men and troublemakers. David had the power to control evil men and troublemakers and make them do right. So grace and peace be to those who hear and be diligent doers of this word because God is a man of valor.
and righteousness, who can make evil doers and troublemakers, do right. Hallelujah.